you've got to realize that whatever you're doing, you're competing with somebody. What is it that gives you an advantage over your competition? Whatever you're good at, try to be great at it. And if you're great at it, good things will happen. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. This is the Maverick Podcast. I'm your host, DJ Maverick. Today, we are rolling out the red carpet once again. We have a songwriter, actor, father, NMC, yeah. the one and only Willis Ryder. Welcome wow, to the pod. Wow, wow. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it, man. This is dope. Before we dive into everything, for the 1% of the people out there that don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm just a really passionate guy. Um. Uh, I was raised um, in theater, uh, yeah. studied theater, uh, studied improv, and got into spoken word, and it just kind of flowed me into songwriting, and um, I learned a lot of tricks to the trade of songwriting and just kind of fell in love with it, so now I'm just writing my little heart away. Yeah, multi-talented, yeah. right? Yeah. We were talking a little bit off camera about your event that you just had recently, you rented out like a whole movie theater and yeah. had music videos. Yeah. Also, you have never seen that before. That was a cool idea. How'd you come up with that idea? Man, um, I think it, it kind of stems back from me being an actor. Yeah. And um, I did a few movies last year um, for the love of money. I was an extra. I was a background extra in uh, for the love of money. But shout out to um, the director. Oh, dang. His name is Melvin. Okay. His name is Melvin, but he directed For the Love of Money, had some really big stars in it. And I really liked the experience because he let the background extras come to the premiere. A lot of times, like the major people don't let just the extras come to that's the premiere true. because you get to be around the stars and stuff like yeah. that. So that's, um, I kind of got inspired when I went to that premiere. I'm like, man, I want to do my own premiere, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I haven't shot a movie, so, but I have shot a lot of mini movies with my music. And uh -huh. I got about 11 videos out right now um, that you can go stream on my YouTube, but I just decided to make my own experience and just show all my all my videos yeah, back to back to back. I thought it was a dope idea because you were kind of combining like your love of music and then like you said, your love for acting like yeah. all together. And then you also had artists that had their own music videos, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the um, first one was just me um, doing my videos and the okay. second one was the premiere party. Got That's it. when I wanted to get everybody else involved and share the platform. Yeah. And um had some really cool uh KO second chance. Yeah, shout out. Yeah, man, free everybody du uh Dwanique, um they all, you know what I'm saying, purchased a slot and we all had a good time, took some pictures and man, watched our videos. Congrats. And yeah, thanks. That's, that was very cool. So what came first? The the love for acting, music, like what came first? You're also like a, a songwriter too, right? Yeah, so yeah. what came first for you? Um the acting. Acting? Yeah, my mom, bro, she um super big into just movies. Yeah. And um what kind of movies? Bro, all kinds. She like she loves horror. She loves like the dark stuff, but she just loves actors in general and she just she just loves it. And yeah. so I've always been a character growing up and she's always kind of been like my director, like dance or make them laugh. She just she always nice. did, did that to me growing up. And um when I got in high school, I started taking drama class and I started doing drama competitions and I got really good at the monologue competition. Then I studied um, acting in college at Washburn University, at UCO, at Rose State, okay. and even in Atlanta. So um, acting is just, uh, it's my first love and um, it's, it's really a long game. So like, I'm gonna be acting when I'm 50, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so sure. I figured, you know, I fall in love with music and just do that while I'm still young and stuff yeah. like that. Cause I'm gonna be acting forever. That's awesome. Yeah. So you grew up here in Oklahoma. You mentioned Atlanta too, but you grew up here in Oklahoma or what? Yeah, I was born and raised. Born okay. and raised. Um, Very cool. Yeah, I think, you know, the the whole acting and stuff too, if, if you're creative, that lends you to like be super creative, right? Because you get to be somebody completely different, right? You can right? be anything, yeah. Yeah. How do you get prepared for those roles? Are you like kind of one of those persons that dives into the role and they're just like that person for like the entire week or what? I think it's called like method acting, right? Or something yeah, like that, yeah. Right? I've, so... It's crazy because I had an agent last year, but I've never, I haven't had my breakout role yet. Okay. You no, know, but it's coming this it's year. Coming. It's we're, coming. We're putting it out there. Speaking of existence. Yeah. 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 Um, but I did have a, a really dope role um, last year 
I think it was. It was maybe 22 or 23. I had an agent mm -hmm. um, and she got me she got me a commercial with Boomerang and then she got me um, a documentary. Okay. And I actually, I played this homeless man who um, actually died in custody oh, man. of the police here in Oklahoma. And um, he had a stroke. He had he had an aneurysm or a stroke or something. Yeah. Whenever he was in custody in the room in the white room, and uh, I played that scene and I played him dying and that's kind of heavy. That. For yeah. Him, bro. <laughs> and yeah. so I actually played I played um, a younger version of him, mm -hmm. and I played the old the older version of him when he died. And um, yeah, it was just kind of like a the experience was kind of surreal. I was. I was in my in my zone, but it was kind of like it was cool. It was really laid back. They kept just telling me I look just like them. They were like, okay. "You look just like them." So it was like based on a real story, sort of thing, or what? Yeah, it was That's... crazy because a lawyer actually sued the state of uh, the city of Norman or oh, yeah. Cleveland County. Okay, yeah, and he wanted to make a documentary to prove his case. Wow! And he casted us and paid us and crazy. Yeah, it was wild, bro. It was wild. Wow. It, Nothing ever really happened. With, I mean, I don't, I don't think anything ever happened with it. But yeah. the production was amazing. I mean, and that's like a awesome like way to like sort of like work those muscles, right? You're having to dive in and do something like that that's super heavy yeah. and like get into character and stuff like that. Like, yeah. yeah. What What do you think is like your favorite genre? Are you like doing serious stuff like that, or like comedies, or maybe even you you mentioned some of the suspense type movies? I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm not huge into action. Yeah, um, I, I would love to do action comedy. I'm just I'm trained in comedy. I I, I started uh, doing stand up comedy as well. No way. Yeah. So. <laughs> Is there anything you don't do? <laughs> I, I can't I can't sing. That's why yeah. I'm a songwriter. Okay. But yeah. I saw you like rapping recently. Like this oh yeah. Week. So I mean. Yeah. I just you, put an yeah. album out. I did. I, oh, you did. Yeah. No. I'm okay. I'm doing my music right now. Just not singing. You're just like rapping. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm a rapper, but it's okay. cool. My music is dope because um I co I collaborate with a lot of singers and I write the lyrics for them. Okay. Um, not all of them, but most of the time I'm gonna write the hook just because. Yeah. I'm Willis Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So how did you get into songwriting? How did, when did you discover that? Did you start like kind of writing, writing poems, something like that? Or how'd you get started with that? Started in church with church. motivational speaking. Really? But then I had wrote this speech and I was like, man, it's not long enough. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to make it longer. But then I just started rhyming. I was like, whoa, this is poetry. And so I kind of like really got into poetry mm -hmm. and... um my, and then it, my poetry just evolved into rap, you know. It's yeah. And I think kind of money kind of kind of you know inspired me. Like I think it's kind of harder to monetize as a poet rather than a rapper. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just a bigger market. And so I just I just kind of got really inspired to rap. And um, but I would always hear melodies, and I knew I always knew I couldn't sing. Like mm -hmm. I'm never I'm not one of those people who like try to sing. I I'm mean, like, for this rappers that sing all the time, Kanye's new album is basically him singing. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that are doing that. Yeah, I make yeah. melody sometimes, but I, I like real R and B soul music, so that's the stuff I hear. And I just you know I hear choirs and all type of stuff. So yeah. Um, my first song that I did, I have a really good friend. His name is, his name is Coriano Gibson. And um, I wrote a song for him, and that that's what started my songwriting career. I was like, man, I wrote a song called "Prayer for You," and I gave him the hook, and he did it, and I was like, wow, I kind of fell in love with that feeling. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, Kanye, what would you think of the Kanye album? You know, I didn't even listen to it, bro. No? I didn't it, listen to it's it. It's so crazy because the rollout was like super like sketchy like he changed the cover mm -hmm. i don't know if it's because of the jason Voorhees mask if he's gonna get sued yeah and then he didn't clear a lot of the samples like he had an ozzy osbourne sample that apparently didn't get cleared yeah so there was like songs getting added yeah. and removed and the cover changing it was a crazy rollout bro kanye's in so many deals that's why it yeah. was just he couldn't even show his face yeah and i just think um i love kanye i'm like one of the biggest kanye fans ever but um I kind of feel like Kanye is kind of like, he's kind of like confusing the the listener. Like he kind of like putting us in this type of trance of like, you like you never know what he's gonna do next. And he's up right. and he's down. He's light. He's well, dark. Well, just not long ago he was like, I'm going in I'm spiritual. I'm not Gospel. gonna cuss anymore. Yeah, bro. You listen to this he album. It. It's not he that anymore. It. Yeah, he flipped it back yeah. dark. But it, it's just a crazy rollout. When I was like checking it out, I was like, man, maybe I should just like download it. And then just like store it because it's gonna change and it did change because yeah. all the stuff that didn't get cleared, like just the versions are the, the Backstreet same. Boys sample was crazy. I wanted to check that out crazy. and it's not on the album. <sighs> it didn't get cleared, I guess. Yeah, he yeah. he he, sampled, he went sample crazy. Yeah, I think for me the, the album is more like 
showcasing his production versus yeah. like him like actually like rapping. That's or, real. Yeah. I never even thought about that because we get so caught up in him. Right. Him. Right. And he yeah. did go crazy on the production, but I was just curious what you thought about that. Yeah, I haven't heard it. We were talking about the movies and everything, and he had that Jason mask, but then he had to take it off and yeah. change the cover all of a sudden. I didn't so. like the cover. I didn't like the cover. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you got into songwriting that. and then you started exploring that and then eventually did your own song or what? I say songwriting because I, it was my song. I just wrote the hook for okay. him and then I still rapped on it. Oh, so even from the beginning, you were on the song. Mm hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I've been making music for, since about. 2015 or 2016. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Tell me about yeah. the Apollo. I saw the Apollo. Man, and it bro. sounds like multiple times at the Apollo. Yes, yes. I, I've, so been twi I've been twice and I'm going on May 1st. What is that like? Because I always hear like these nightmares like, hey, if you go to the Apollo, oh, you bro. better be on your game, right? Bro, that's why I asked right. you. Um, and we're kind of, I mean, it's cool anyways. Um, but no, the Apollo is just, um, it's just a legendary stage. Man. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so I went there first three years ago, and um, it was crazy. I did poetry. So this the evolution of the Apollo is crazy. Um, so the first time I went, I did poetry. Okay. They booed me. No way. <laughs> but okay. the crowd started thundering with applause at the same time. What? How does that work? Booing, but clapping? How's yeah, that work? and it's on my Instagram. Like okay. You can go watch the video. They were booing and clapping, and eventually the boo stopped. And I got the I got saved by the crowd, and I got to get because if you get booed off, you don't get judged, right? So, but it's so was it like a mix of the crowd? Some people were booing, and then yeah. others were clapping, and yes. they were kind of just like fighting each other back and forth. Yes, okay, because people because inevitably, inevitably people come to boo. Like yeah. you're if you if it's anything wrong, they come in wanting to hate, like yeah, bro, <laughs> like you better be the best, right? It's boo culture, yeah. And so they were booing, they were clapping. I was spazzing the whole time. I was. Man. <laughs> you can watch, you got to go watch it. And I was just going off and they, they respected me. And um, I ended up coming in, in fourth place. So I didn't make it to the next round, okay. but I was able to get judged. But after that performance, they said, anytime you ever want to come back to the Apollo, you can't. No way. So it's like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a resident at the Apollo. Like That's anytime crazy. I email them, like they can. You're just on the list? Yeah. And it's just. But how did you get to, to that in the first place? Instagram. Like Instagram. Yeah. They were, they were really? running an ad on Instagram and I just submitted a poem and they loved it really just yeah. like that we, I, yeah. I know you're a big believer of like energy we were talking about that too right yeah so, yeah 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 so tell me about that you believe in like the law of attraction and stuff like that yeah right? bro i actually wrote a poem like for you really it has something to do with what? the law. yeah bro let's see you want to hear it yeah absolutely right. you can't leave me it's, like, yeah, on the it's, yeah, like it's, that. It's, it's short but i had to write something for you <laughs> all right so i said um i said i'm far from average that's why i had to come chop it up with dj maverick they know my name from coast to coast and even in Dallas. I use my talent when I meet it with when I'm I use my talent when I'm met with a challenge. I use gratitude to strength I use gratitude to strengthen my magnet. I'm attractive. So just close your eyes and imagine because if you can see it in your mind, then you can have it. Man, that's yeah. so dope. Yeah. That, that might be the new intro for the pod. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to like get you to put that down. Like, yeah, I gotta get yeah. a clean one for you. But yeah. yeah, I wrote that today, man. I was that's like, crazy. I wanted to write something. Man, I totally appreciate that. I was not expecting that. You're like the first person to do that. So that's pretty cool. I got you, man. Awesome. So Apollo, sounds like you're a resident now. Is it better now when you go back? No more booing or what? So like, I, how do you even prep for that? I wasn't done. <laughs> so the second time I went back, right? So you have to play, you got to place top three to go to the next round. It's yeah. like a, I think it's like five round, it's crazy process, but it's $20,000 cash prize. So I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't advance the first time, but I didn't get booed off. The second time, that's when I was wearing my rapping bag. I was promoting my album and there's an unwritten rule to never do original music at the Apollo. Really? There is. That's, how's that? I would, I would think the opposite that you would want to come and not like, be like sort of biting somebody else's stuff, right? No, the whole thing is like is like covers. Like that's what wins. Like okay. people doing covers. So like people just find the most popular song and then Interesting. use their amazing voice to that's their talent. It's okay. their voice, not the writing. And so I had brought a singer the second time. I wanted to do this song. Yeah. And um it ended up going bad, bro. No way. And so I just I made I I made a mistake, you know, and I owned up to it, you know. And this was like the this was like the the turning point in my career mm -hmm. was this moment of getting booed off stage and just realizing that I have to always be in control of like my own career and my own creative 
choices because sure. I I have a team and you know we all decided the song that we were gonna do and it was just the wrong song mm -hmm. and plus we I shouldn't even been up there doing music I should have been doing poetry and you were doing an original or a cover I was doing an original original yeah and okay. I brought a singer and she actually came in first on the song and they booed us off in twenty seconds dang twenty seconds. I didn't even get the rap that's right <laughs> so, what could possibly go so wrong that in twenty seconds you're off the stage it could be so much it could be our outfits it could be our energy it could be our talent. They just wasn't feeling it. Yeah. And um it was a turning point, bro. I, I it was like, man, do I and I was I was having a kid too. I uh, my, I just had a daughter and okay. she's turned one. So I was it was like a lot going on in my life and I was like, man, I was like so hurt and but I was like, nah, like this this is gonna make me like you know, it's not gonna break me. Did Apollo hit you back? Like, hey, you remember that one time when you said open invitation? Uh, we might have to roll that back. That's what I told. I waited. I waited like like eleven months to a year. You did, and um, I was like, I, I was watching this documentary of a uh, Chris Rock and Kevin Hart in New yeah. York, and I was like, I'm ready. Okay. So I hit him up. I'm like, I'm ready to come back, and they was like May first. And they were cool. They're like, hey, so even if you get booed, you're still welcome to come back. It's yeah. like a one and I'm, done. I'm always you. welcome. Um, okay. You know, I think after you win, then you're kind of like done. But that's the thing. They, if they, if they rock with you, they yeah. don't let you keep coming back and competing okay. for that twenty thousand. That's cool. I didn't know if it was like once you got booed, like if you don't make it at the Apollo, it's like you. Nah, no, no. Nah, nah. Yeah, you keep, you can keep coming back forever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So, at least I can. So you, you got booed again, and that didn't deter you. You're like, I'm gonna get better, and I'm gonna come back. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. It, it didn't. It hurt. You know, it really hurt because I'm really yeah. passionate. Um, but I was like, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. I dropped my album. I dropped my album like shortly after that. And um I actually put a clip of me getting booed. On the album? <laughs> I, on, no, I put a clip of me getting booed um on the music video for okay. a single off the album called Life's Not Fair. Yeah. You gotta check it out. So that's it's, cool. It's actually a clip of us getting booed and then me doing a voiceover and me going into the song Life's Not Fair. So. That's like the ultimate motivation, right? Like yeah. getting booed and you're like, just watch me on and come back, right? <laughs> yeah. That's really going. cool. So, you know, a lot of people probably listen to to the podcast and they're like Oklahoma. They probably think, you know, we're not rich in arts or culture, right? But I want to let you sort of speak to that because you're involved with all the arts, you know, people are doing cool stuff in the city. Yeah. So put them on to Oklahoma because I think they're missing out, right? Yeah, man. Um, it just goes way back. And, um, you know, of course, you know, my culture, I'm black. And um, there was just a lot of black excellence going on in Oklahoma, a lot of black towns and just yeah. a lot of stuff that was taken out. And um, but one of the things that I want to highlight was the deep was Deep Deuce. OK. Um, you heard of Deep Deuce? It's it's I've heard of the area. But yeah. I don't know the history necessarily. So before it was just like restaurants and stuff, it yeah. was um, jazz, jazz bars and you know, uh, performers would come from all over the world. Like okay. famous jazz musicians would come from all over and perform in the Deep Deuce, and it was just, wow, it was just a lot of great music happening and getting made. And yeah, and I actually, um, I made a video to commemorate the uh, the Deep Deuce, and uh, it's called Super Classic. So okay, you can stream that on YouTube as well. But awesome, yeah, man, Deep Deuce, man. A lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people don't know about Bowley, Oklahoma, the nineteen twenty one massacre in Tulsa, like yeah. Black Wall Street, like. Yeah, I think now we're kind of sort of getting on the radar with all the movies that are being produced here, stuff yeah. like that, right? But I still like when I when I travel to places and I tell them I'm from Oklahoma, they don't know. They yeah. don't know. They yeah. they still expect like people riding around horses or something. I don't know what they expect, but yeah, was, they don't expect movies and stuff like that for sure. It was right? some Oklahoma cowboys who were actually just um, who just did a shoot a, sh a shoot with Louis Vuitton. So it's always like. Go West Coast, go East Coast, yeah. right? Go to Atlanta even, right? Yeah. And I tried it. I tried it. I went to LA, spent some time there, um, learned a lot there. Got too expensive. I went to Atlanta. That's when I really fell in love with songwriting. And um, when COVID hit, I came back to Oklahoma and I was like, I'm not going to stop. So I yeah. still travel. You know, I do my own tours and stuff like that. But Worldwide. I'm going to call you Mr. Worldwide. So you got like... <laughs> Honduras, yeah, and then like Alaska, yeah, something right coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm going, I'm going, yeah, I'm going to Mexico <laughs> and I'm going to Honduras. Yeah, and um, I'm actually shooting a movie out there. So really? when I go on cruises, um, I document the whole process. Okay, and um, I make a movie out of it or a documentary. Yeah, it's called Cruising Through Life, and so I did Cruising Through Life one. So I'm gonna do Cruising Through Life two, and it's a poetic film. So I just I vlog the whole thing and I I voice over it with poetry and. Okay. It's a really cool experience. Awesome. We didn't really dive into it, but also another thing that you do is MC, right? So yeah. is that something that you do often or is it sort of just for like close friends that you MC their events or what? 
No, no, I, I am. I'm a host um, for sure, through and through. Okay. Um, I've been hosting open mics for ten years now, and um, I host like my family events and people book me for all different type of stuff. I'm yeah. I'm DJing slash hosting a wedding in or in Orlando in October. So Wait, it's, so you, we're adding DJ to the list too. Yeah, I mean yeah. I've never DJ, but no. <laughs> I have a I have a like I said I'm an actor. I have this DJ persona. It's yeah. called DJ Willie Nice. So okay. I don't DJ, but I do DJ drops on certain songs depending nice. if it's an anthem or not. And the bride and groom know that you've never DJed before. <laughs> yeah, they're, they, they're they, cool with that. They know me, so <laughs> they, they they I'm just really gonna be playing music. I'm gonna tell them to hire yeah. their own DJ. They just. Yeah. Paying for me to be there. I mean, I think an important part of being a DJ is the vibe. So if you know sure. like how to read the crowd, which being an MC you do, right? And yeah. sort of like how to, you know, take them on a journey, which I always try to do when I DJ, right? Sure. So you want ups and downs. You don't always want it like super hyped the entire party. So for sure. I think you can figure it out. Yeah, I don't know how to scratch, but I definitely <laughs> can create the vibes with the music and the yeah. MC for sure. That's awesome. So what other uh, projects you got on for the rest of the year? I mean, it sounds like you know, Man. you're just into arts in general. So do you got like movies coming up, more music coming up? What do you got going on? I'm writing my own movie. Um, okay. Cause that, that's another thing I'm going to do with the movie theater. I'm going to do my own movie and I'm going to, um, it's going to be in theaters. You know, I'm just going to pay for it to just to, to keep going as long as we can. Cool. And um, <clears throat> so I'm working on that. I'm working on the documentary for the cruise and I'm just putting out so much music this year. Um, me and Second Chance, we about to drop a double single next week. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's called Belts and Switches. Have you worked together before or what? Yeah. Um, yeah. We made a lot of music together Yeah. Uh, over the past like year. Okay. Um, last year, I bought a feature from him and then like we did one song and became best friends and awesome. now we got like 15 songs in the vault, like multiple projects. Okay. So we're about to start dropping that. That's cool. We were also talking about sort of like you were asking me, hey, what's what's your sign, right? Mm -hmm. So are you like deep into that? Like you sort of like can read people's vibe and kind of determine what their astrology sign is or what? Sometimes. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I like to try to guess people's sign. Yeah. Um, I normally do that with girls, but okay. <laughs> but um, but no, I, I don't know too much, um, but I'm just really big on like like things resonating with my spirit. Mm -hmm. And so once I started reading into like my life path number. Um, what is that? Because I have no idea. You're going to have to talk so, to me like I'm five. With so, all this. <laughs> so it's like it's like mathematics, like with your birthday. So it's like okay. an equation that breaks down to a number because, you know, numbers stop after nine. It just after nine, just it repeats. repeats. Yeah. yeah. And so like you have like one through nine main like life path numbers but you also have master numbers that's super deep but but just like the main one through one through nine it everybody's birthday breaks down into one number and it's just like a personality type and okay sometimes like you'll read that and that'll be way deeper than your astrology interesting yeah so it'd be crazy if my number was like my favorite number which is 23 i have to do the it math. could be six yeah it could be or it could be okay. five two plus three or two times three. It's just Interesting. a lot of things are mathematics. So I, yeah. I, I like it. I like math. I like numbers. So throughout your sort of journey, doing all the music, acting and everything, what's what's it been sort of like the the driver behind that? Just like reading vibes, following people you admire, like, you know, how did you guide your career so far? Open mics. Open mics. Yeah, okay. bro. So um, when I do my tours, I get booked in certain cities, but sometimes I'll be like, man, I just want to go here and do an open mic. And you know it, it could be in Kansas or any every yeah. every place has open mics, and so that's what really like changed my life. So back to the Deep Deuce, there used to be an open mic in the Deep Deuce before it got gentrified out called Urban Roots. Okay, and I was doing stand up comedy there before I was old enough to be in there. No way. Yes. So we're adding comedy to the list too. <laughs> it started. It started with stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess I kind of skipped over that. Yeah, we need to dive into that. So because I think being was, a comedian, yeah, it was it's short super list. hard because it's just you, the mic, yeah. and the audience. It's like you don't have anything to hide behind, right? Like just yeah. you, the mic. I really am talented. I'm a talented guy. I, I, and it, I'm really humble at the same time. But it, when I get to talking about myself, I'll be like, dang. I do do a lot of stuff, but I skipped over comedy, but I've been doing comedy since like middle school, no, really? high school. Uh, I did my first comedy competition at church, at People's Church, okay. and I did a clean set and everybody loved it. Yeah. And so um, I've been doing comedy since then, and then I picked it back up after I, uh, after my freshman year of college. Um, I actually got inspired by a comedian named Tracy Ashley who performed at my college to do comedy. Okay. And she told me, I'll never forget, she was like, 
I was like, I'm a comedian too, just like you. She was like, you ain't got no pen and pad. I know you're not a real comedian. <laughs> and that always stuck with me. And that's yeah. what kind of like just drive me to write, you know, mm -hmm. become Willis Ryder. What's it like? Because writing comedy and writing songs, two different things, right? Yeah. So how do you go about writing a joke? Is it just like, because I feel the best jokes are stuff about like, just normal day life stuff, right? Yeah. That we've all can identify with. Right? Funny stuff happens to me yeah. all the time. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, bro. I I just I literally just get up there and talk about my life. When I do comedy, I, I just go up there and I do I do craft jokes together with punchlines and stuff like that, but normally I just um I just have stories highlighted in my head and I just put them down on paper and okay. kind of put them together. Do you have comedians that sort of like your goats, like the the top maybe I don't know top five type three like i don't know i want to put you on the spot here i gotta go with cat williams number one yeah <laughs> just because my generation you know yeah. and you know it's a lot of buzz around his name right now definitely that's not why i go to them but he has literally so many specials that are like legendary and, yeah. and same thing with his acting roles like every time he's in a movie it's like iconic yeah and um he's just um He's just masterful with his with his word, like the way he speaks and how sharp he speaks, and um, that's that's just that's my goat. That's my goat right now. That's that's okay. num that's number one. And I gotta put I gotta put Martin Lawrence on there because he inspired me to act like for real, like yeah. with the Martin Show. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, he yeah. yeah. I'm Martin for sure. Number two for me, and then number three, I'm gonna have to go with. Um, I was gonna say Jamie Fox. I was I was Man, expecting that Jamie, just because he's yeah, like that's music, my, my type comedy, of guy. acting. Like he's like another guy. Like, Jamie, what else can he do? Right? Jamie, bro. Yeah, you're Aries <laughs> like me, so yeah, you know what I'm thinking, bro. Yeah, Jamie that's, Fox for sure. I was gonna say that. I was expecting to hear that for sure. No. I didn't want to steal your your thunder, but I was expecting that to be. No, I was really thinking of a a, a women comedian, but no, nah, yeah. Jamie for sure. You can't you can't skip over Jamie. Yeah. So how do you balance all this, right? Because another thing that I always hear is like you know. If you chase too many things, you're never going to be a master of mm -hmm. anything, right? So, is that something that you struggle with, like pursuing all these interests, all these loves? Like, how do you just boil it down to one thing, right? I, I have, definitely can't. I have this mantra that I say. I say, today I begin a new life, mm -hmm. for I'm the master of my abilities, and today is going to be a great and beautiful day. Miracles are on the way to me with lightning speed. Currency is flowing to me currently, and everything I release comes back in threes. Nice. So I don't I don't subscribe to uh, that quote, the master of none, or Jack of all trades, master of none. I, yeah. I just um, I just always do my best. I live my life by the four agreements. Um, what are those? Have you ever heard of Miguel Ruiz? He has a book called The Four Agreements. I recommend you to read yeah. that book. Yeah, Man, you give me all kinds of homework. Here. Homework, bro. I got you. I got you. But uh, The Four Agreements, uh, always do your best. Never make assumptions. Never take anything personal and be impeccable with your word. Okay. So I'm Willis Ryder. And so, I mean, everything that I do, it has something to do with word. And so mm -hmm. I just got to be impeccable with my word. And then you just take day by day as far as like which passion you're going to pursue or is it like whatever you see that's giving more fruits? Like I'm gonna like you know dive into this for a little bit, or how do yeah, you do yeah, that second one, yeah, yeah, because I mean now I'm I'm just legitimizing myself, and so different type of opportunities are coming mm -hmm. each way, and so you know I got to provide for my family, so whatever really is making the money at the time is yeah. probably what I'm leaning towards. Um, right now I'm I'm doing a lot of writing for other people. That's what brings in a little bit of money for me. I do voiceovers, um, that brings in money. Um, I'm actually making a little bit of money off streams and shows too. So that's cool. Um, shows that's one of my big things right now is trying to make the right events to make money because I've been doing good with the events. Yeah, you're like a curator of the vibes. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. That's really cool. What about the the whole comedy thing? Are you gonna do anything where you're mixing maybe music and comedy? I think that would be kind of cool too. That would be dope. That yeah. would be dope. I'm actually working on a um, a comedy open mic. Okay. That I'm gonna host, and so I'll be doing like short sets and stuff like that working on my craft and, yeah uh, yeah i've been excited i've been really preparing myself for that because I'm, I'm a father now so i got so many like so much material to pull from and so yeah that's that's um one of my friends is is starting a new um event space juice bar type of vibe okay and um he wants me to do an event there so that's going to be my event of choice that i want to do awesome so yeah that's that's what I, that's what i got coming for the comedy and, and the movie too my movie is going to be a comedy okay yeah 
Cool. With the comedy, do you sort of like practice the jokes and see how they're going to land? Do you like perform them in front of a smaller group before you take it on stage or what? Just try to find a punchline to put in there and then I just practice that. So I got the plot of the story, got the punchline, and then I got the ending of it. Got it. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. If I pull up your playlist, who am I going to find on your playlist? <sighs> what are you listening to? You, you digging the new Beyonce? That's what everybody's talking about right now. Bro, I haven't listened to that. No? Man, Man, bro. The big thing behind that is like, I guess country radio is refusing to like yeah. play a song on country I've music, that, bro. which if you think about it, like what qualifies you to be on country radio, right? Because right now, all the popular country artists have 808s. Like it wow. sounds like they're like rapping and stuff. Her song sounds more country than what the country than what Morgan Wallen is doing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. And she's from Texas. Right. Right. I don't know. It's crazy. But a lot of people were protesting. And I guess the stations are like. It was uh, a station in Oklahoma, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's bro. crazy. It's Beyonce. I mean, I don't yeah. know. She's, you know, like I think somebody says she wants to mark every tree or something yeah. like that. But um, I'm not huge on Beyonce. Um, I do love Beyonce's productions, man. Her productions are crazy. Yeah. Um, but but no, I I did like the Renaissance album. I did like I did like that album. Okay. Yeah, I liked her dance album for sure. And what about your personal plays? I just sort of jumped in after I oh, yeah. asked no, you good. about Beyonce. You good? But that was like fresh on my mind. Um, Eric Bellinger. Okay. He's on my playlist right now. Um, there's an artist in Tulsa. His name is Gang Taijun. He's on my playlist right now. And what's a, what's another one? And then it's a whole lot of old, old school on my playlist right Okay. Now. Yeah, so you I, listen to more like old school, like yeah. R&B, funk, stuff like yes. that or what? Yes. I, I love okay. 2000s and 90s R&B. Okay. That's, How did you get into that? Just growing up or yeah, my your, mom. your parents and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. My mom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, 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 my parents love Jagged Edge. And okay. So yeah. I, I love I loved all Jagged Edge and my mom loved Erica Badu. So a lot of my music is like gives like Erica Badu type of vibes, okay. Jill Scott type of vibes. So it's really yeah. dope. It's really dope. That's cool. Have what you heard you, the album? See oh, more bro. homework. <laughs> Gotta check out yeah. Eleven Eleven. Yeah. yeah. If you're out there listening, check out Eleven Eleven. Yeah, definitely. So what do your parents think about your music? You know, the, the, now you're like rapping question. and stuff like that. Have they told you of like, hey, we believe have they always believed in you? I don't know. Bro, that's a great question. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, so I feel like, okay, so I dropped out of college, right? Mm -hmm. And my dad wasn't happy about that. They want me to be in school, but I just feel like, you know, the whole universe is my, the whole universe is my university. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I like that. So, um, yeah, man, it just took a lot of self-belief. I'm big on self-belief. They, my parents, they always knew I was talented. I'll never take that away from them. They always supported me, but I feel like, it's always been that undertone, like, you know, kind of get a plan B, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't know if it's going to work, but um, that never just that never deterred me. Um, I just, you know, like I said, I got to keep going because it's what makes my heart happy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You got to do what makes your own heart happy. I always hear to never have a plan B, right? You hear about all these entrepreneurs. Well, you don't want a plan to fail. And everybody's like, if you have a plan B, you're never going to make it. So mm -mm. I don't know. Yeah, bro. <laughs> That's what I always Yeah, hear. bro. I'm I'm never gonna stop, man. Yeah. I never I, I love this, man. And and people love it too. You know, it's just it's a slow game. Like I said, I'm gonna be acting when I'm fifty and I'm gonna do music till then. Yeah. I think, you know, just in our short time that we've had this conversation, the thing that I pick up from you is you never take stuff personal. Right. Yeah. So if someone like says boos you off the stage or says you're not wow. good enough or whatever, you're still gonna pursue that dream, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you keep that mentality going? Man, bro. Um I guess just studying, like over time, it's just the certain, those principles that I share with you, it's just, I hold on to them. And um, I'm just a firm believer in like, if it don't kill you, man, it's going to make you better. Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, I got faith in God, you know what I'm saying? And just, I'm a radical optimist and um, that's just who I am. Bro. Yeah. Did become a father sort of change your your game too because i think if you're a father then you're like i got to do something to like provide too right so yeah. i don't know if that's part of the motivation as well now yeah yeah no for sure yeah ever since my daughter got here i've, I've been working a lot smarter i've always been a hard worker but mm -hmm. now i gotta like you know pick what i'm a you know what I'm saying? it's all about time management yeah and and the value of the opportunity and so that's what i'm big on right now but ever since my daughter's been here everything has been up so really like, it's my good luck that's charm. cool yeah, she's my good luck charm for real. Awesome. She was born at eleven o'clock. 
And then 11 minutes later, I was like, what time is it? And it was like, it's 11, 11. That's crazy. So it was wild. She yeah. was born at 11. And then once she was done getting weighed and everything, it was 11, yeah. 11. So I think, you know, okay. walk me through sort of the moments because nobody's ever prepared to be a father, right? Like, were yeah. you scared or were you like looking forward to it? Or you're like, oh crap, like I got to keep them alive. Like they don't come with instructions, right? So yeah. how, how like, did you feel? Like planning, like getting there? Or? No, no. Like once she was born oh, and, man. and it's like the first time they're like, here, here's your baby, right? You're, you're holding her for the first time. Bro. What was going through your mind? Oh, man. So, so, um, my daughter's mother had a C-section. And um, so that that whole thing was crazy. Yeah. It was bloody. I was like, can I watch? And they were like, yeah, if you want to. And it was so much blood that I had to step back. Man. <laughs> and I was like, that's a lot of blood. Yeah. I hope she stays alive. Like, <laughs> And so, um, so I stepped back. And then I was just listening to what they were saying. And she was like talking to her, you know what I'm saying, keeping her calm. And she was like, okay, on three, you're going to feel a really big tug. And she was like... Are you ready? And then she's like, one. And so I hurried up and looked. And she's like, one, two, three. And she reached in and grabbed her. And then when she came out the womb, she had her arms up. And she was like, ah! She was screaming. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. She almost made me laugh. Okay. And like when she came out, she looked exactly like my sister. That's cool. And um, and then the doctor put me put her in my arms. And she was just warm. And it was just like. You were ready. Yeah, it was yeah. just like. You weren't scared. You were in like, I don't know. I was excited. I was <laughs> excited. excited. Yeah, it was like I was holding like my own self like yeah. it was weird it's amazing yeah man it sounds like you have to collab with everything that you're doing with whether it be the acting the comedy the music how do you go about that right because i think collabing with people it's hard a lot of people don't want to collab a lot of people don't want to see you succeed wow. a lot of people don't want to you know even support what you're doing wow. right how do you go Bro, about that you're good at this man <laughs> <laughs> you're good at this um so it's that's a great question again because that takes me to my next point is music business. Well, when we say collab, you can collab. We're collabing right now. Right. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm going to take the question as far as music just for right now. Yeah. Um, and I just think I just I go about it in a business aspect. And um, and, and and at the same time, I go I go about it case by case, you know, and um, more so if somebody asks to if somebody requests to collab from me, there's going to be some type of fee attached mm -hmm. to that. And um, it's not a set price. Like I said, it's case by case. And okay. um, and so that's just kind of how I go about it. Do people always like that? No. And the thing is, is like somebody can be like super professional on social media. You might think that they're like the coolest vibe ever. Then you meet them in person and they're completely different, right? Yeah. I don't know if you saw the documentary of making a We Are the World. Did you see that? Uh, I'm gonna give you homework now. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that. That's okay. the Michael Jackson. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you I'm, need to watch that. Like, how, is it on YouTube or what? It's on Netflix. Okay, work. Yeah, so it's like one night. The only way that they got everybody to come in it was because it was like awards show. Everybody was in town, wow. and they're like making this song. It's like five, six in the morning, and they've got all these artists that are like you know superstars, right? Nobody wants to collab. Everybody's like wants to be the biggest star there. Wow. And somehow they got to make the song. They only have one day to make the song. Wow. It's crazy. I got to watch, watch it. Yeah, I got to watch yeah. that. But that's kind of what it reminds me of, because you might think like this person's going to be super cool to work with. Then you get in the studio and they might be a jerk. Right? Yeah, man, that ruins the whole vibe. Yeah. Yeah, I never want to be like that. I just always got to value myself. And um, hopefully that inspires the next person to value themselves. How do you know who to collab with? That's that's my question, right? Um, Well, like I said, I got a team. So um, one of my one of my really good brothers is um he's like the he's the producer the engineer the manager the okay. <laughs> investor he's like <laughs> awesome. i really got a, a um a golden team of not that many people um but people like very important pieces and so um you know a lot of times uh, my manager he'll kind of be like you want to clap with this person you want to clap so he he actually found chance i, I already knew about chance because chance yeah. got a hit you know what i'm saying we always vibed his song way back in the day yeah and um but no my manager he was like he's he had been following chance as of late and he was like bro you need to do a song with him so your team kind of like vets people out and like yeah kind of yeah, gets the feel yeah. for it before they even like collab with you yeah yeah, yeah he, okay. he finds like people to match with my vibe got it and um i and i got a lot of friends that make music too so i always like to collab with my friends too were you ever in a situation where you got in the studio and then just the vibe was off like it's just like it's not gonna happen 
Uh, I've had writing sessions like that. Yeah. Never, never in the studio. You know, every time like I've been in the studio, um, if it, if it was like my session or I was called into the studio, it's been a good session. But writing sessions get tricky because you know people. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to start this culture where people are writing together. Okay. Yeah, that could be tough, right? Yeah. How does it even start? Like, do you like assign a person to do like the chorus and somebody does the intro? No. Or everybody just brainstorms together? Walk me through that process. Yeah. So I, I, I've been curating a lot of write, writing sessions and normally there's a lead writer. Okay. Um, that kind of, and I learned this in Atlanta um, in different type of writing sessions. And it was crazy because when I was in Atlanta, we was in really big writing sessions. They would ask me if I wanted to say anything, if I had any lines and I was just scared and yeah. <laughs> but now I'm doing my own writing session. So um normally you got a lead writer and um most of the time the writer is really cool and the the writer wants everybody to be involved. Okay. So um a lot of times how it goes is there's a writer in the booth and then there's a team of people in the in the uh control room, mm -hmm. you know, pitching lines and stuff like that. So, but the way that I like to do it is like we're not even recording, we're just like writing the song and like we're all just like you know, everything's open like, you know, you know, if anybody has anything. Yeah, no instrumental or anything playing in the background. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to have the beat. We got to have, have a beat. beat. Yeah, yeah, okay. we got to have a beat. And um we we kind of start with a topic and yeah. start with the chorus and we kind of just everybody throws stuff in and if it's good and you yeah. know, everybody will agree on it. If it's not, then you know. What do you think about AI? Have you messed around with AI? A lot of people haven't, are, bro. Are I'm leveraging haven't. that to like write movie scripts, to write songs, like all that creative stuff. Like, you know, the whole strike was about that. Like, they don't want AI sort of taking over the writers and stuff like that. Right? That's what the strike was about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was part of the, right? There was more about salary negotiations and stuff like that. Yeah. But AI was also like introduced as part of that negotiation. Wow. Yeah. I think it takes the soul out of it. You think so? I think so. I think it's just another tool. I'm a big tech guy, so I yeah. kind of see it from another perspective, right? Like, it, it allows you to to have another tool, you know? But do you don't think it's like, it can make like people lazy? Oh, for sure. I mean, if, and, and that's with anything, right? Like, yeah. you could say that about the computer. Because people right? are writing essays with, with AI, with chat yeah. GPT. Like, for sure. So, like... Are you really learning what you're supposed to be learning in school? You're not learning, but you might be 5X or 10X better than what you normally could have been, right? Because now you've got inspiration basically from the whole world. You've got the internet in your pocket, right? Yeah, until it goes out. <laughs> like it almost <laughs> like did today, today. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. But no, man, I, I'm <clears throat> I'm all for it. Um, I'm not against anything, really. Yeah. Like, you know, until until the Great Reset, I'm, you know, I'm just like kind of like watching it with everybody else. It feels yeah. like the Truman Show. But um, um, as far as like the Chat GPT writing uh, stuff for people, uh, I be kicking him at five thirty all the time. So he has a daughter. She's so smart, bro. And I, I guess he told her to write a poem or a song or something so she could go out with her friends. Okay. And she used Chat GPT. Yes. <laughs> did he? Write, did he? Ca he catch her? Or I what? didn't catch it because okay. he he read the poem to me yeah. and he read it over the phone. And I, when I got there, I'm like, Sarai, you just wrote the best poem ever. Like, what nice. the heck? And he was like, Bro, she used Chat GPT. I'm like, What the <laughs> heck, bro? Did she like just sort of like break down and like tell the truth or what? Happened? Yeah, she had already told him like yeah okay. before I got there, but yeah. they didn't tell me. Yeah. So yeah, man. I, funny. I mean, it's crazy, man. It's it's alive. Artificial intelligence. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it's like another tool and whether you like it or not, it's, it's not going to stop. It's right? going to happen. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. So I don't know if you want to plug in, you know, we're getting the signal here. We're running out of time. We'll give you the stage to plug in your social media. Yeah. Anything you got coming up. Social media. You can follow me everywhere at Willis Ryder. Um, I got a website now, willisrider.net. Okay. Um, and you can subscribe to my YouTube, Willis Ryder. And um, I got a, I got a, I have a monthly residency at Hubbly Bubbly every third Thursday. So my next show is March twenty first. It's gonna be uh, JB is gonna be headlining, and um, it's gonna be really dope. There's gonna be open mic attached to that as well. And I'm gonna be going to South by Southwest. I'm on tour right now. So nice. Just catch me in a city near you. Cool. I want to thank you for being on the podcast. Yes, sir. I definitely enjoyed the conversation. It's awesome. Bro, it was amazing. Yeah, I think the vibes are there. Like you said, as soon as you were like, hey, what, what's your sign? I think like you already knew the vibes are going to be yeah, there. Yeah, for right? sure. Cool. All Loved right. Loved it, bro. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. There you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, the super talented Willis Ryder on the Maverick Podcast in Dreams We Trust. Yeah.